In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an angled bisector. But first, what does the word actually mean? Well, bi means two, and sector is like sections. So what we would expect an angled bisector to do is split the angle into two equal sections. On a diagram, that would look something like this. If we had an angle like so, you would expect an angle bisector to split that angle exactly in half. Something like this. Okay, that's what an angle bisector is. But how would we draw an angle bisector? For that, I'm going to use some nifty software from Emaths, and we're going to do our angle bisector. There's the angle. Now we need to bisect it. The first step is to get out our compass. To be honest, that's a step that many students don't get. They get out their protractor, and then they measure the angle, and then they go halfway. The thing is, the question would always say, use a ruler and compass. Now, that method of using a ruler and compass is always going to be a lot more accurate than simply measuring the angle, if we do it properly, and then splitting the angle in half. And also, the question would say, show your construction lines. Now, if we use a protractor, we're not going to have any construction lines. That's why we need to use a compass for these questions. So, step one, I know it sounds a bit obvious, but we need to get out our compass. Get out our compass. Step two, and this is the step that many students find the hardest to remember, is we need to mark two points on the angle. Mark two points. What do I mean by that? I mean we get out our compass, we put the sharp bit of the compass on the angle, and then the length, by the way, doesn't matter. It, it, honestly, it could be this short or this long. Uh, it really doesn't matter, so let's just go roughly in the middle. And we're going to mark two points on the angle. So let's keep the compass the same now. Now we've chosen our length. Let's keep it the same. Let's mark the first point. Move it down here and mark our second point. If you like, those are our two new launch pads. That's where we're going to launch our angle bisector. But first, we needed to draw our two launch pads. Let's write that. These are our launch pads. So we mark two points on the angle. These are our launch pads. Now we can advance. We can go forward. And we can put the sharp bit on our first launch pad. So we've, we've created a, a couple of launch pads and now we're going to move the sharp bit of the compass onto our first launch pad. Keep the compass the same length now. Don't um, mess about with shortening it or lengthening it. Let's keep it the same length and move the sharp bit onto our first launch pad, like so. Now we spin. Spin in a circle. So let's write that. It's quite fun actually. So spin in a circle from the launch pad. There we are. From the first launch pad. Second step spin in a circle from the next launch pad. There we are. So let's do that on our diagram. We've spun a circle from our first launch pad. Let's move the sharp bit to our second launch pad and spin in a circle again. Keeping the length the same, remember. So always keep the length the same. I'll, I'll do that over here. Keep, let's do that in purple. Keep the length the same. There we are. Final, last step, step six. 
is simply join the angle to the crossing. Join the angle to the crossing. Let's do it right up here. To the crossing. What am I talking about? Crossing. Well, you notice we've now, with all this work, we've created a crossing point here. So what we're going to do, our last step, let's do it in yellow, is there's our crossing, there's our key point, and we're going to join it up to the angle. And that actually cuts our angle exactly in half, perfectly in half. There is our angle bisector. It was really fun to do, and so let's quickly recap what we need to do. First, we get out our compass. Second, we draw two points on our angle. They're going to be our launch pads. So we keep the compass the same length. It doesn't really matter what the length is as long as it's this, it's keep it the same. And we mark two points on our angle. Then, from our launch pads, we put the sharp bit into the launch pad and then spin in a circle. Put the sharp bit in the other launch pad and spin in a circle. Finally, join up the angle and the crossing with a line using a ruler. And they will have an angle bisector. Say our angle was 50 degrees, we've now created two angles of 25 degrees. And we'll see in other videos how angled bisectors and perpendicular bisectors can be used to create 60 degree angles, 45 degree angles, and even equilateral triangles.